Hi everyone and welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to change the memory thermal pulse on the Zotac RTX 3070 Ti. As you know, the um, default thermal pulse are not the best. Basically, they are using, I think, the most cheapest uh, thermal pulse out there. And also because I was noticing some uh, really high temperatures, about 100, 100 and five almost degrees on the temperature while gaming so um, I try also to undervolt the um, the GPU but uh, the memory as you might know it's a GDDR6X so um, it's going to have uh, anyway high temps um, I try to um, to change it once with some uh, generic thermal pads um, from Amazon I didn't get as much as low temps um, as I was expecting to. So then I decided to give it a try to the FAMU's um, jelly thermal pads. Here we have the three millimeters, which is going to I go, I'm going to apply it on the on the back plate. Uh, and here there are two uh, thermal pads of one. Uh, I don't know if the camera can uh, can see. Is this a one? Point uh, five millimeters. Also, here we have the thermal paste from uh, Noctua. Okay, first thing first, I'm going to remove the um, IO plate here. There, are th there are three screws here. Okay, after removing uh, the three screws here. We, uh, you have to remove also one screw here and uh, the other one here also. Here we go. The IO plate is removed. Okay, you don't have to uh, remove the fans in order to uh, remove the heatsink from the um, from the PCB. But we have only to um, go and here, here we go, and uh, we have these four screws here, and other four small screws here. So I'm going to start with the with the biggest one here. Okay, once uh, we have removed all the screws here, we can go, we can proceed and um, remove the heatsink here. Okay, so here we got our um, PCB here. To remove all the old. I'm going to clean all this with one of these um, cleaning wipes that came with the thermal paste from Noctua. This is really useful, easy. I find them to be really easy. You can just use them. Okay, so all is clean up, it's nice and clean, everything. Uh, so I'm going to apply the um, thermal pads here, on the memory here, I'm going to show you a little bit near here, on the memory here, here, and also here, the one uh, of 1.5 millimeters. And also here on this small condensers here, this four here, and also this one, two, three, eight condensers here. So for this row of condensers here, you can choose either to apply it directly here or you can you can pre-apply it here. So the moment you put the heat, the heat sink on, they're going to be on place. So I'm going to cut the thermal pads now. 
I'm going to leave down in the description all the dimensions for him to cut as much as precisely you you have to. Okay, so now we are done with all the face part of the PCB and I'm going to uh, now remove the back plate in order to so before removing the back plate remember to disconnect also this cable here which is the um, RGB lighting here for the logo of uh, of Zotac so let's go to remove this cable here then you have four screws here one two three and four Gotta move the PCB from the back plate. Here we go. Okay, I'm going to replace um, also this one. Even for this one, I'm going to leave the, um, the dimensions in the description down below, so uh, you can cut precisely the um, you can cut precisely the thermal pads. Let's mount back the PCB on the back plate. Okay, I'm going to apply the thermal place and put back the heatsink. Okay guys, this is it. Uh, finish reassembling the all the graphic card. Don't forget to plug in back the the power of the of the fans, otherwise they won't spin back again. And also the RGB cable here, the black one. Don't forget to connect it back. So that's it. I'm going to start doing some tests and check how the temps are going to be. Okay, I just installed back the graphic card and the temps are nicely low low um, in memory temperature are 40 between 40 and 45 degrees let's say so it's more than okay um, i'm using msi afterburner for um for all my settings in this case i will leave everything um, default also the fan curve is default so nothing has changed here i don't want the benchmark to be influenced by any settings here so everything is default the fan curve uh, default the voltage the power limit everything is default so let's go and run uh heaven benchmark here and check how it's going to be okay so i uh, haven't finished the bench uh, we have some results here but um, we don't need those now and let's go to check the max temps which i can see from now are 84 degrees so we have almost 20 degrees less mm, to be precise 18 degrees less so this is a really really huge uh, result in my opinion uh, from just simply changing the um, the thermal pads um, you can uh, you can lower also the core temperature here by, by undervolting that, but I will make another video on how to undervolt the, the graphic card in order to have a low temps without losing basically nothing in performance. A couple of things to consider here. Uh, these temps, um, of course, uh, are amazing, but these temps depends also on the case you have, on how many fans you have on the case. On on what kind of fan curves you are using. I leave it on default, but um, in certain cases might be a, li a little bit loud, so you you might want to change the fan curve and low, low a little bit the speed. And, and of course, you are going to have a couple of degrees more. Okay, this is it. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if so, I would really appreciate that, uh, that you hit the like button, uh, subscribe, and also share this video. Thank you for watching and see you in the next one.